Hey everybody, how are you doing today? Happy Thursday, hope it's going well. I think my internet's behaving better and I can actually load Canvas pages now, so that's a good sign. Uh, although I can't have chat on the screen, so I've got to have it over here on my phone, which is a little crazy, but that's okay. So we will persevere. So we are working on our linked lists today, and we're going to talk about our Stacks and Queues project as well. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to chat about that. It just wouldn't load on Tuesday. So let's start talking about the project, and then we'll come back to linked lists. Uh, we'll, we'll do some more talk on that. We need to get to doubly linked lists. Um, and then our lab on Monday, we're going to um, fix it up and clean it up, make it a little bit easier with a circularly doubly linked list with a, a dummy header node. It sounds like gibberish, I, I know. Sorry, it's, a, it's all nonsense. Um, hopefully it'll make more sense as we get there. So uh, we'll work on that today along with the project. And then next week we've got midterm review. Um, I'm going to post the sample midterm. I'll, I'll post it today, actually. Um, and then on Tuesday, the 23rd, the only plan I have is to answer questions you guys have about the sample midterm. We can go over answers if you want. So I'll post it for you early. Um, you can take a peek at it, look at how that's going, and then um, we'll go over any questions or that you have about the midterm itself. And we go from there. Again, this one is timed. Uh, the plan is to take it on March 1st. Uh, it was about a two-hour time limit from start to finish. I'll open it up about midnight or so, close it, you know, 2, 3, 4 in the morning, whatever, um, sometime before Tuesday, 6 a.m. or something. It's probably fine. Uh, any two-hour block you want to take it, go for it. Hit start. you got two hours to hit submit. And that way everyone gets the same amount of time on the midterm here. Um, and then we'll move on to new topics. So we're almost halfway through, believe it or not, which is, which is really crazy. But we're halfway through our content, uh, which is fun. And we're working on the second project. That one's new. We'll have two other projects before we get to our final project as well. So those are still coming in here. Um, I think that's going well. Hey, Professor Peter. Thanks uh, for coming on back. And all you math nerds, nice to have you. Um, we are not doing anything math -y at all today, unfortunately. Um, but our project, you might find nonsensical and that's part of the fun here if you want to see if you could solve it in python that could be fun for you so we're going to talk about our stacks and queues project. oh why is it in here twice that's silly wow what did i do huh right, they're both in there that one looks normal is this one normal what did i do get what did i do folks Okay, that one has nothing, so let me delete that one. Yeah, let's, let's delete the empty one. That's weird. Oh, where's my delete button? Come on, Canvas, show me delete. There we go, delete, okay. So this is due uh, by the Thursday after the midterm. So we've got two more weeks to work on this project here. I know the midterm's coming up the first, so either you get this done early or you do it after the midterm. It's not too terrible. Yeah, uh, it's, you know, le learning management systems are not terrible software, but they're super flexible, so it's easy to do the wrong thing. All right, so this looks like gibberish, but it's okay. We're going to talk through what this all means. So we are designing a, a little calculator here for our unloading merchandise and delivery system. We have to load airplanes and trains. We're going to load these big containers on that come from the docks. So big container ship comes in and we're going to start unloading things from that ship okay so the idea is we're going to stack material up to five containers high if it's going to be sent by train so imagine like the shipyard comes in and then we're just stacking these things up for us to put them on the right train here but they can only go five high otherwise they're at risk of falling over and crushing people to death and killing people is definitely not allowed so no more than five high for safety reasons, okay? If it's to be sent by a plane, we've got a really big, giant conveyor belt. We just stick this on the conveyor belt, and it starts pushing it out towards the airport. Because the airport can't be all that close to our dock, right? The trains can come, like, right up to the dock here. Not a big deal. We've got room to get that train yard in there. But our airport needs a little bit of extra room here. Um, so that has to go on a big conveyor belt. We've got one worker loading trains and one worker loading planes, don't talk about adding other workers for extra efficiency. We, for rules, unbeknownst to us, have one worker on trains and one worker on planes. That's it. That's all we're allowed. Okay? So trains closer to docks have a smaller train number or plane number. So whoever's closer to it, right, is going to take longer. So if we are loading trains, it takes us two minutes 
times the train number to pick up the container with our high-low, take it over the train, put it back on, put it on the train, and come on back to pick up the next package. So two minutes per train number to move the item. Now the conveyor belt system for our planes, it's, this takes a little longer and planes are spaced a little bit farther out and we got to stop and wait and, all do, and do all this stuff. So it's 10 minutes times the plane number to move an item from our conveyor belt at the dock to the plane and come back. So given the order that items are unloaded from the ship, we have to determine the total time it will take to load all of our materials. Now we're not optimizing anything, we're just saying, okay, this is how long it's going to take given this system. Right? Later on down the road, we could we'd have some fun with optimizing. All right, so all of our input is just ugly console input. We're going to have T, P, N, T, and N, P, where this is the trains, planes, um, number of items for trains, and number of items for planes. Okay, trains, planes, number of items for trains, number of items for planes. That's the first line, like here. Three, two, five, ten, five. So three trains, two planes, ten items for trains, five items for planes. Okay, second line is T integers, separated by spaces. That is the number of items for each train. So for each of these T trains, I'll have two items on the first train, seven items on the next train, one item on the third train. The line after that is our planes. Three items for the first plane, two items for the next plane. Okay, then the fourth line is, these are all of the containers that we're unloading off the ship here with the train number. So I know what train to put this ship on, what, to put this container on, it, they're tagged, right? I got a big label here. I'm going to go put them into my stacks of no more than five high, right? Okay, and then for the plane, I'm going to put all these items here. This one goes to plane two, plane one, plane one, plane two, plane one on the conveyor belt. Okay, what it's going to do is calculate time it takes to load each train and each plane. Okay, so it'll take me 25 minutes to load the first plane, 36 minutes to load the second train, three minutes to load the third train, 65 minutes for the first plane, 50 minutes for the second plane. So let's draw this out. This will make much more sense if we draw out a picture here. Maybe, okay? So we have three trains, right? So I've got train one, I have train two, and I have train three, okay? And then I have planes, right? So I don't know, what's like a wing here. I don't know how to draw a plane with its funny nose. Here's plane one, and let's scroll it up a little bit here, plane two. Sure, that's not a terrible looking plane, right? It's, I don't know. It has, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's got that end thing at the bottom, doesn't it? That's right. It's got the little tail at the bottom. I'm not an artist, sorry. That's plane two, okay? So we've got our trains, we've got our planes, and here's our little boat out over this way, right? It's a, one of these little container ships, and it just has all sorts of containers on it here. One of those big shipping ship, ship ships, shipping ships, container ships container ship. Here's a, here's a nice visual for you, right? That's a big container ship, okay? So we're just taking them all off. We know which ones are tagged for. They went a little higher than five high. That's probably safer at the ocean. Uh, we're not going to go more than five high at our dock because we don't want to crush our poor dock workers, okay? So th this is the order in which we pull them off of the ship, right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to unload our ship, Okay, so we have a spot for trains, right? Remember, we're stacking them no more than five high. And then we have that little conveyor belt for planes, right? Okay, so the first train item we take off goes to train two, and then another train two, and then another train two, and then a train one, and a train three. We hit five high. That stack is full. The next item then goes onto the next stack behind it. Okay, and remember our little, like, forklift thing over here, this little... uh forklift is going to go pick up. There's a little guy in here driving it, right? He needs to lift up the forklift, pick up the one off the top, okay? That's how that one's going to work. And then our planes here, right? This is like a nice little conveyor belt going this way. Um, so we're going to get two, one, one, two, one, going that direction. Or, you know, let me, let me draw this the other direction here. It'll be a little cleaner, make a little more sense. So two, one, one, two, one, right? So this is the front here, as we put them on, it loads them that direction. So now each train, each set, you know, so trains hit a worker and planes get a worker. So we're gonna do those separately here, right? There, I don't know why it doesn't refresh sometimes. So our little train worker here is gonna grab the first train item. It's for train number three. 
Now our trains are probably drawn the wrong direction here, right? We need to draw them the other way. So this is train one, train two, train three. One, two, and three. Okay, so he's going to take that first train item, which is train item three, and he's going to take it to train number three. And remember, it takes twice the number minutes to get there and back. So the trip to get there is only three minutes. Okay, train three had... We had two items total, seven items total, and one item total. As soon as it gets to that item, it's full, it's ready to go. It could take off if we wanted, right? Sure. So train three is full at three minutes. It takes me three more minutes to get back here now because it was so far away. So now it's been six minutes. Okay, so this one's taken off. We pop it off the stack. What's next on the stack? Okay, well, now there's a one. So we're now we're going to forklift the thing for one. We're going to take it over to train number one. Now it's been seven minutes because it takes me a minute to get there, a minute to come back. Now it's been eight minutes. We pop that one off the stack. That one's done. Then we're gonna grab this one for train number two. All right, so train number two, go to train number two, load it up. It's been 10 minutes. We come on back, it's been 12 minutes. That one's off the stack. Grab the next one, pop it off the stack. Go back to train two, 14 minutes. Come back, 16 minutes. Grab the next one, 18 minutes. Come on back, 20 minutes. The front stack is empty. Now I can work on the stack behind it, right? We're only working on the front stack at a time. Hey, it's a queue of stacks of train items. See what we did there? <laughs> okay, so then it's been 20 minutes. He's going to grab the next item for two. Take it over. It's been 22 minutes. And he comes on back. It's been 24 minutes. That one's done. He grabs the item for train number one. Train number one goes here. It's been 25 minutes. It now has both items. Check. Okay, we come on back. It's 26 minutes. Grab this one. 28 minutes. Come back. 30. Grab this one. 32 minutes, come back, 34 minutes, grab this one, go there, 36 minutes. This train has all of its items, good to go. We come back and it's been 38 minutes. There's nothing else for us to do. We can sit and take a break. So the trains then were loaded in, right? Trains were loaded in three minutes for train three, right? Um, 36 minutes for train number two and 25 minutes for train number one. Okay, that was the number of that was the minutes it took to load. So this is to load. Okay. Then the planes, right? This is all happening at the same time. Our little plane guy here on the conveyor belt, right? I don't know whatever he's driving, probably another forklift, right? So he'll come up and he's gonna grab the first thing off of here. He's got his little forklift box here. Okay, he's gonna take that. It's for plane number two, right? This is he's working out off of a conveyor belt or a queue. Right? The first in, first out. So you're going to take it to plane two. It takes 10 times the plane number to get there and back. So two times five is 10 minutes to get there. One item. Right? So it needs, this one needs two items. This one needs three items. Okay? So 10 minutes to get there. 10 minutes to come back. It's been 20 minutes. Take this one here. Five more minutes. 25 to get there. 30 to get back. Grab this one. 35 to get there. 40 to come back. Take that one there five times the train number, plane number to get there, so 50 minutes to get there. This one is fully loaded, has both items. 10 more minutes to get back, 60. Grab the last item, takes five more minutes to get here. We're at 65, this one's loaded. Right, so 65 for plane one and 50 for plane two. What do you think? Straightforward, right? Makes perfect sense? Maybe? So again, it's just using stacks and queues, just having fun with the, the data structures, playing with them, right? So using classes for this. You don't have to use classes to solve the problem, but this is, you know, we're, we're a programming class. We're talking about object-oriented programming and design. So we're going to use classes, right? You're going to have classes for all these things, okay? Five points for that. Having correct train calculations is three points. Those are harder. Planes are a little bit easier, so only two points there. And then using a queue of stacks for our train items and using a queue for the plane items, five more points, just for using the right data structure. Remember a queue, you can NQ adds to the back and you can DQ takes from the front. If you have a queue of stacks, right, you could put a new stack on, take the stack off. Stacks get added to the back, they get NQ to the back, right? So fill up your stack, put it in the queue, fill up your stack, put it in the queue, that sort of thing. And then when you are working, you're always working the front of the queue, top of the stack. Right? We said, hey, work the front of the queue, which is the front stack, work from the top of the stack on down. Mm 
Okay, so you should be able to handle any input here, right? For any number. So I think uh, less 100 or less trains, less than 100 trains, less than 10 planes, um, and um, that's doesn't make any sense here. Less than the number I'm going to give you. Sorry, that probably should have had a number there. I think it's like 10,000 items or 1,000 items and 10,000 items or something like that. I forget what the number was here. Not not infinite. Is that that's silly here? Sorry. Okay, so for different output inputs, we should get different outputs. Okay. Does that make sense? And we need to be um, making sure that we can handle various inputs. Right. Uh, one thing most people miss: if you don't have an even multiple of five train items. Right? As you're stacking up your train items here in your queue of stacks, right? If I had 11 items, I'd have another stack back here with just one thing on it. That's okay, right? Just don't forget you got that, right? It's not always going to be even an even multiple of five. So don't forget about this guy over here, okay? Plate items are easy. They just go into a queue. Easy there. But we have to stack up train items and then queue those stacks, Okay? Remember, the order listed here is the order in which they come off the dock or off the, the ship, right? So you take five, up to five at a time, right? Or whatever leftover is okay. We read them off in order. All right, how's everyone feeling? Let me pull a pie charm here. So don't do over. This was made recent news. Because a boat like this lost a ton of uh, ton of containers. It made it to port, I think, but a ton of them were, were broken and messed up. I forget, there's, there's some like ridiculous amount of damage for it. Wow, what a... That looks like a mess. I would not want to do that. Oof. Yeah, and, like bad things fell into the ocean, right? Because of these containers. Dimensions, look at that. Look at all this fun stuff we can look at while PyCharm loads. The CSCL Globe, MSC Oscar. 19,000. Holy cow. Those are some big ships. Wow. Man. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. PyCharm. So we're playing with our linked lists, right? This is a singly linked list here. Now, if we wanted to, we could now add an option for adding something at a given index. Right now we don't have that. Right, right now we can add to the front and you can add to the back. That's it. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could add in an option to add at index. So we're going to define add here, which will, uh, what do we call ours? Add it's called add to index. It takes an item. All right, let me zoom in a little bit here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to validate that that index is valid. Right. So if we're empty, it's it's invalid, but we can check. So we're going to say if the, oh sorry, the item and the index. I think it's index first, right? Index and then the item. Sure. Doesn't matter. We can we can do a nine order we want. It's our it's our program. So we're going to say if the index, or I'm sorry, if um. Zero is less than or equal to the index is less than the self dot number of items. Then it's valid here. We're good to go. Else an exception? Yeah, we could do that. Or we could do an or. So like this is all of that. We could not all of this together. Say not that. We could raise an exception. I kind of like that. We'll say not. So this is valid. If it's not valid, we're going to raise an index error. Invalid index. Okay. So maybe we could actually put it at the self number of items. Because we could say, hey, you want to be at index zero when we're empty? Or maybe, hey, you want to be the new last index? That's probably okay. We could do that. Um, that you know, let, let's skip it though. That's going to cause more trouble than we need. Because then we have to deal with adding the front or adding the back and all that other stuff. Um, yeah, let's not worry about that. Let's just add to a particular index here. 
Okay. So if we didn't raise the index error, now we need to go find where we're going to put it. So remember, let me do a new canvas here. Remember, our linked list has nodes, and each node points to the next node in the list. Here, right? So if this was A and B and C, right? So this is index 0, index 1, index 2, okay? If we wanted to insert at index 1, we want to put something at the new index 1. Well, what I need to do is I need to make the new item. I'm sure, this is, I don't know, new. We can store whatever we want here, quote new. We're going to make it, and we need to make A point to it so that it becomes the one, and then it points to this one now, and we need to break this link. Now we put ourselves at index one, right? This is now two, this is three, this is index one, right? Does that make sense? So uh, the, the easy case, right, we can say if index equals zero, we're going to self.add to front the item. Okay, that's it. Because add it to the front, it's already done, we know how to add to front, we're good. Right? Now if the index is equal to the self dot number of items, um, it has to be less than. So no, okay, so we can't add to back using this, that's okay. Yeah, let's do that, let's do that. So we'll say it's less than or equal to the number of items. Index is equal to self dot number of items. Then we're going to self dot add to back the item. Okay, so if we want to be index zero, right, we add to front. If we want to be the last item, which is new, a new index that we don't actually have, right, so if we have three items and I want to be index three, sure, I'll just add you to the, add you to the back, okay? That's okay. If we're not any of those other cases then, right, then we need to go find where we need to go. So the problem with a linked list, here, we could even do this, right, we could define a, uh, you know, what is it, the item? No. Wow, why am I not remembering index? I think it's index. Do we do we do that with our other linked lists? I don't know, we'll just call it git. Um, index. So first, check here that it's a valid index. If not, now to get to a particular item, this is actually going to be really slow, right, to get an index. Okay. So I have indexes 0, 1, 2, and 3. If I want to get index 2, I can't just find that location in memory. I have to start at 0 and go to the next item, and go to the next item, and go to the next until I get to the index I want to return that data. So getting an item out of a linked list is slow when you're by index. So we're going to say for, um, or we'll start it, we'll start at um, 10. So self dot, or we'll say current item is equal to self head. Okay, and we're going to loop now. We're going to say for, uh, I don't know, this is number in range of index. Because we're going we're to stop before we get to index. What we need to do is we need to walk that path. We need to start here and go to the next one and go to the next one and go to the next one. So this is traversing a linked list. To do that, we're going to say my current item is equal to the current item dot next. Remember, so head is a node. Node has a next property. Uh, next here. Okay, it becomes next. So if I want index 2, right, we said, well, the start of head. So current is head. Now we're going to range from 0 to 2, not including 2. We're going to go to next. So current becomes next. Right? And then do it again. Now this one becomes next. Now we're here, and we can return that item. When we're done, we return current item dot data. Okay. Hey, thanks for coming in, Pro Gamer. Yeah, no problem. So this is how you get an item by index. So in terms of performance here, right, this is O of K. Right, whatever that index is, we need to take that many steps to get there to go find it. Remember back to our array lists. If you wanted an index, constant time. No matter what, we could go get it because we just had to do the arithmetic, because it was one contiguous block of memory. So array lists are, or queue 
sorry, linked lists are really fast for adding the front, adding the back, right? Taking something out of the front, not a problem. Super quick for us. But getting a particular item by index is really slow. So we can see some trade-offs there. Now to add to an index, we get the same thing, right? This is O of K again, because we have to find that index. Okay, so adding to an index here then. So if it's not that, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna range through, we're gonna take current item, and we're gonna go through and go find where we need to go. Okay, so if it's index one, we wanna go one time. Well, actually we don't, because the problem is if we're following along, here, let's uh, let me redo this here. So we'll have A to B to C to D. Right, so index 0, 1, 2, and 3. If I want to become the new 2, right, if I want to put something into the index 2, say we'll put in new, I need to stop 1 before 2 so that I can break that chain and put myself in. So I want to range 1 less than. So I want to go to index minus 1. And I know this is going to be okay because it's not 0. So if I wanted index 1, I'm going to stop at current. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new item. So I'm going to make a new item equals a node, given the data. And what comes after this? Right. Well, what's going to come after me? So if I'm a new item, what's going to come after me? Well, it's whatever this thing's next is. Right. I want to point to that same thing. I want to put myself in that loop, put myself in the connection. So I'm going to take the current items.next. Okay, um, node, right? Uh, oh, self.node, there we go. Given, oh, the item, sorry, item. Okay, but now what I have here, I, I haven't pointed B to me. So now I have myself, I'm pointing at the next thing, but nothing points to me. So I need to change the thing that comes before me to point to me and to break that link. Okay, so we're going to break that link. So we're going to say current item dot next is equal to the new item. And that's it. Now we've inserted ourselves to that index. Okay, so this is just O of K. If you remember back to our array lists, right? If we had an array list and we were to insert something, everything else would have to bump down. So no matter where we put ourselves, it was N items, O of N, because the more N I had, the more shifting I had to do. Because if I wanted to put myself at index two, I had to move everything that came after two. I could get to two really quick, right? But then I had to move everything that comes after it. So it was actually O of, uh, was it N minus K? Right? This is just O of K. I have to get to the index. The other one was you had to shift everything of N minus the index off. So if you're inserting to the front, remember we saw that was really slow. It took a long time to shift everything down. If we're adding to the back of an array list, we didn't have to shift as many things. Okay? So K or index, right? O of index. I don't know. They use K a lot in the book, but yeah, it's the index. A dad joke. You got it. I have some... Oh, where is my phone? Did I leave it somewhere? Shoot. Um, no, I had one. So um, my, my kids got on this idea of, of ghosts and supernatural nonsense stuff and like, I don't know, probably some discovery show. You know, they're like the ghost hunters and they try and make it all fancy and stuff. I'm like, well, well, yeah, of course ghosts are real, you know, but they... They, they will never go in this one room in the house. You know, this is this. If, if you're worried about ghosts, you have to stay in this room of the house because it's, it's the safest room and ghosts will never go in there. They avoid it. Do you know what room it is? They avoid the living room. <laughs> yeah. All right. That, that, was, that was a little weak. Sorry. Okay. So we can add an item to an index. Done. But it's, it's a little slow, right? Because we have to go find or walk to that item to go get it. Okay, how about a remove? We could define remove some an item. Okay, so we're going to go find that item and remove it. So the problem here, right, is we have a little bit of a complicated piece here. So if I have A, B, C, and D, right, A points to B, B points to C, C points to D. If I wanted to remove C, how do I remove it? How, how can we take this one out? Well, to take it out, I need to take B and say, oop, you jump, point to D. It's out of the loop. Right? And just jump it. To jump it, though, we have to be looking ahead to find out where we are. Okay? So we have a couple cases, right? The special case is when it's the first item already. 
Well, we know how to remove from front, right? We can remove front. It's not too bad. Remove front. Okay, we can do that. So we can check it. So we're going to say, all right, so if... Uh, probably to make sure we're not empty, right? Um, make sure we're not empty first. Other than that, we'll be okay. So then if we didn't, if we're not empty, great, now let's check. So we're going to say if um, self dot head dot data is equal to the item self dot remove front okay done okay, that was it right remove front good looking at all the methods we had oh we need to add to index it needs to increase our self dot number of items plus equals one that's important don't forget to add your items list here right uh, but only if we're doing this one, that's right, only if we're doing this one, because add to front and add to back already do that for us. So don't forget to add one to your items here. And remove should do the same thing, right? Remove. Oh, I'm sorry, we haven't got there yet. That's right. Okay. So if we're removing from front, great, we're done. Problem solved. If that's not true, right, else, now we need to go find this thing, and we're going to hydration, 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 hydration. Oh, my goodness. I have a little bit of coffee left. I will drink it and try not to talk even faster. And you're, you're getting in there too, gluten? Gluten-free? API? Oh, Pappy. Gluten-free Pappy. Oh, man, I'm running out of coffee. What have you done? Oh, dear. Uh, this is actually espresso. I have a really cool mocha pot. I think it's fantastic. Uh, makes some really good espresso. All right, so if we're not the front item, we need to be walking along looking to see if our next item is the thing to remove. So from here, we need to say, is this the one to skip? Is this the one to skip? Is this the one to skip? And just keep looking ahead and ahead and ahead, because if we get to B and we want to skip B, well, I'm too far. I can't make A point to C, because I don't know where A is anymore. Okay, so we need to always be looking ahead of us. So we're going to take my current node. Current is self-head. Okay, and then we're going to loop, right? We want to keep on doing this as long as we haven't hit the end. So we're going to say while um, current.next is not null, none, is not none. Okay, because as soon as our next is none, remember D has no next. There's nothing that comes after it. It's next is none here, right? It points to a big fat none. That's the end of the list. If we get to D and we haven't removed something yet, well, we got a problem. So we're going to keep on looping until this happens. All right? So then our loop, um, when we're done, then our else, right? If we get to the end of the loop, we're going to raise a value error. We'll say item not found. Okay? So what we want to do, as long as we have a next, we're going to compare. So we're going to say if current.next.data is equal to the item. If we found a match, then we need to skip it, right? If I found C, right, let me erase all this hopping stuff here, right? We wanted to remove C. So we're going to start at A, right? We, it's not a match, so start at A. Is A's next C? No. Okay, let's go to next. Is B's next C? Yes, it is. So we just need to skip over. So what we're going to do is we're going to take current.next is equal to, change it to current.next.next. Oof, isn't that nonsense? All right, but we do need to be careful. We need to take current.next.data and set it to none, right? Clean it out. So this is, uh, clears the reference for garbage collection. Right, make sure it's not hanging out. Set it to nothing, right? Then jump over it. This is jump it in the list. So take my next, point it to the next next, right? Hey, thanks so much for cheering and donating to the Student Scholarship Fund, Hector. Glad to have you along. So if this is the one we're removing, right, this is my next. My next next is that one. So I change my next to be my next next. And we none that one out. It's gone. Okay. Then we need to take our number of items. Minus equals one. Okay. If we didn't find a match, we walk. We take current equals current net dot next. Go to the next one. We just keep on going until we find our next is none. If we get there, 
well, we didn't find the item. We can't remove it. Right, and now this one again takes uh, an O of, uh, again, K, right? I mean, the, the first time you find the, the item, we can remove it, jumping it super fast. So it's just, you know, wherever it happens to be here, it's going to take time to remove. Remember, with remove of our array list, once we found the item, we had to shift everything else down to backfill that spot. We don't have to do any of that shifting. So remove in an array list is always O of N because you have to go find it and then you have to fill up the spaces. For us, it's just O of K. How long does it take to find the first one? Because taking it out of the list is constant. There's no shifting that has to happen after. No shifting of items after the removed item to fill an empty spot. Okay, so remove can be faster. Right? Same like adding. Adding. This could be faster, right? No shifting of items after the index. Okay? Hey, how's it going, Crow? So I've got the chat up on my phone, and my computer was misbehaving when I had chat up on my other monitor, so it was upset with me. Okay, so we can remove an item. We can add to an index. We can get an item. Now let's try pop, right? We'll do the, pretty much the same thing here, but we're going to pop an item off of an index. Let's try pop. Nope, 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 nope. What is going on here? Unhighlight. Unhighlight. Stop it. Stop. Shift tab. There we go. Okay. Call this one pop of an index. Again, it's still K, right? When we go find that index, we need to go find it. Now, to remove that item, though, right? To remove it, we can't just return the current item's data. We've gone too far. Right? So remove by item, we'll go find it. Remove by index or pop by index, we need to go get to one before. So we're going to go range to one before. Keep on walking. Okay? So and we should check first, right? So if if index is equal to zero, self.remove front. Boom, done. We know how to do that. Otherwise, we need to go walk, right? And does remove front, does that give you back the data? Yeah, we should return. Sorry. We should return the data. So let's return here. Remove front. We'll give you back the data, right? Whatever was inside of it here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start walking, starting at the front up until we get to one less than where we wanted to go. So index one, we want to stop at zero. Okay. So once we stop, great. So we've got the data is going to be the current items next data. And then we need to jump. So we're going to say current item dot next dot data is equal to none. We clean it out and then jump it. So current item dot next equals the current items next next. Ohio? Are you seeing an Ohio programmer? <laughs> uh, this, sir, is Michigan. I think you are in the wrong state, my friends. All right. So, to again, to remove something by index, we need to go find that index. So let's go back. Let's say we had, again, we got A, B, C, and D. Okay. Oh, we should also check, hey, if we're removing the last item, uh, we've had a special case here. We've got a little bit of trouble. Uh, no, actually, no, we should be fine. Let's let's take a look. So let's see if we wanted to remove index three. Right, this is zero, one, two, and three. Let's see what happens. Okay. So we're going to start. It's not zero, so we're going to start current here. Okay. And we're going to go to one less than three. So we're going to go from zero, and then current's going to move to one. Current's going to move to two. So we stop here. Here's current. Okay. So we're going to take this data. We're going to get ready to remove it. We'll set my next to be this one's next. So remember, it's next is none. So my next will be none. Perfect. Not a problem. We can remove the last index. Ohio is better than Michigan. Wow. Yeah, I need you to not be spamming, please. I gotta pull up a... Uh... It's fine if you want to promote Ohio, but no spam, please. Let me grab that here. Let's manager. 
All right. I don't know if I can mod for my phone. Oh, I can. Yeah, okay, I can do it for my phone, but it's working out okay. Yeah, let's not do the spam, folks. All right. So we should be able to remove right an item by index because we're going to jump over it. Okay, so I'm going to stop at 1 to 4 and remove. If we did remove, right, make sure we take our current items, num self dot number of items, minus 1. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, my friend. All right. There we go. Cleaning that up a little bit here. All right. So we should be able to remove it. So again, with a linked list, it's still going to take um, more time. Right? Because we still need to get to that index. So if our index is at the beginning, it's going to be a little bit less. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely using in real life. All right. So we still have to get to the index, but once we find it, the removing is quick. Remember, removing something from a... Um, an array list, we still have to get there. All right, my friend. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, they're they're fun little data structures for coding interviews too, but uh, they are useful, right? Um, they, they have some specialty cases for sure. Ah, uh, gluten, my friend. We gotta stop. I'm out. All right. Yeah, so, um, you know, the speed of which you can add or remove from them is really nice. And then in lab, we're going to talk about adding a little wrapper here. And we'll talk about a positional linked list. So that the way we interact with the data structure is by position. And once you have a position, we can add and, add and remove from it very quickly. Um, but that's going to take a little bit more time. I don't think we'll be able to get to positions today. Um, but the idea is if you're doing a lot of adding and removing, and, but you're not really, you know, navigating the list a lot and getting stuff from the front, getting stuff from the back, you know, random indexes at a time, a linked list can be much more performant because adding and removing is really quick once we have where we are in the list. Okay. So we got all this, right? We can add, we can remove all those things. Now we're going to do one better, right? This is singly linked list should be good. We can try it out, right? We can try adding and removing things. Um, let's see. Oh, I never even used any of them, did we? All right, so let's make a, a linked list here. And let's see what we get. So we want our so list equals a singly linked list. Singly linked list. Right, we want to add some items. So I don't know, for n in range 10... Let's take some list. Uh, add to front, maybe. We'll add n, and then while the length of some list is does not equal zero, let's print some list dot. What we want to remove front, maybe. Or remove front. Let's see what we get. Come on, let's see if that runs. Just make sure we can add some things or remove them. Great, so we added them, and then we removed them all. Okay? All good. But now let's try adding to other locations, right? So we've got the list there. And let's uh let's let's try and insert something. We'll take some list. We want to um, add to index. Um, I feel like there's other structures you use when you're doing a directed graph, but it's not something I'm, I'm as, as familiar with. Um, it's been a while since I played with those. Let's just add to index 5. So let's add like 100. 
right, make sure that works. And then again, we sort of need to destroy the list to process it, unfortunately, because we can't, well, I guess we could get, right? We could say for n in range length of some list. Let's print some list dot get. That's right, we did, we did add a get. So we'll print n. There we go. But this is going to be slow, but that's okay. We only added like 10 items. It's okay that this is slow. And this is not a good way to, tra to traverse a list here. Okay, so it adds it to index 5. So index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Index 5 is the 100. We're in good shape there. All right, programmer. I tried, my friend. Yeah, uh, a map is, is like a dictionary. Uh, we use dictionaries in Python instead of map. There's lots of lots of cool ways you can traverse um, graphs and things. Yeah, um, in the map, you would usually use a linked list where you have collisions. And we'll actually talk about that. We do get into... Um, where is that here? Let's take a look. Here's our civil lists. We get into maps, right? Adjacency lists and adjacency matrices. Those are fun things. Yeah, once we talk about maps and hash tables and skip lists, we'll talk about um, how we would use those linked lists there. And they work out really well uh, because it's a nice lightweight data structure. Pro gamer, <laughs> uh, my friend, you're fun. All right. So we can add things to an index. Let's try and remove them, right? So let's uh, some list dot remove, um, or do you want to uh, pop pop a given index? Uh, say I don't know. You want to try and remove that hundred we put in at five? Let's try and pop five. Then we'll go through and print again. Okay, make sure we can add and remove it. Okay, so it's there, and we removed it, and we print it back out, and it's gone. So we can remove from a given index. Looking good so far. Again, we probably should do this with the unit test. We're just eyeballing it right now and feeling a little bit bad about it, but that's okay. All right. So those seem to be working. So that's the singly linked list. Okay. The next data structure we're going to talk about, which is better and more flexible here, is the doubly linked list. Doubly linked list. Okay. It has all these same things here. But now its inner class for node is a little bit different. Yeah, to remove the nth index, you go to n minus 1, and then you jump it. Yep. So if we wanted to remove, here from our example here, um, let's put d back, right? C, d. So if we want to remove 2, we need to go to 1 before 2, and then jump over it, and null it out, numb it out. So you stop one before and you jump it. No, we didn't bother with a circular singly linked list. Um, we'll get into circular in our lab when we get there. Um, so we're going to do doubly linked with it, without circular. Um, and then we'll talk about the, the next way. Um, you know, we might, this might run into Tuesday. because We've got a little bit more about linked lists we want to get into. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff we can do with linked lists. Okay, so now node is, is similar here, let me grab node. But node now is going to track not only the next, but it's also going to track the previous. All right, let's just self, self dot previous is the previous. So what that lets me do now is in my linked list, right, I'm going to have a previous is none, right? Next is b. B's previous is A. B's next is C. C's previous is B. D, its next is none. Right? None. Let me just put it none. Okay, so we're going to have double links, front and back. Right? The problem this solves now is I can remove from the end. Right? Or at least I can remove from the end easily. So to remove from the end before... Right? We could remove from the front really easy because we just repoint head to head next. That was it. Matt Stafford. Is he some sort of sports ball guy? Don't track that. Um, 
you know, same thing. I even played football in high school, and I but I just can't stand watching a game. Um, it's just so slow, and like I don't have three and a half hours to sit there and do nothing. Um, so it's just boring to me. <laughs> but that's just me. All right. So we're also going to track our previous. So what this makes us do, right? So adding to front was good, but adding to back or removing from the back was really hard because we had to get to one before the back to remove the back because otherwise we'd lose the tail reference. Okay, what we get to do with a doubly linked list then is I can remove from back really easily. So again, we have a bunch of these methods we need to repeat and the, the book does a better job with using some inheritance here so we don't have to repeat as much, but it's okay. So we're going to have an add to front, given self and, I don't know, the item, whatever we wanted to call it here. So we're going to check if my self.head is none. Self.head is a node, given the item, uh, self.node. And self.tail is the self.head. Right? Same thing. Done. Nate, you are all over the place, my friend. I got no problem with the community. They don't bother me. All right. So add in the front, right? If we're none, great. Now we have a new one. Otherwise, we do the same process right, that we were doing over here, where... Where's our add to front? Oh, that's right. So we were doing it this way. Okay, we can do that. I don't know, man. So, so I moved my category to science and tech from basic programming. So I don't know. Someone told me I should use the, the science and tech category. All right, so if head is not none, we need to add to front. So I'm going to still make a new node. So I'm going to have a new node is a self.node given the item, and now its next is going to be the current self-head here. And we have no previous, which is okay. So now I need to take the self.head, and I change its previous to be the new node. Right? I need to add that link in there. Well, the chat's just all over the place. I had some spammers who love Ohio earlier. It's just a, it's a programming class, right? You got to stay on topic. Although I, I wander off all the time, so I'm not not too offended. Um, okay, so set the heads previous to the new node because we need to connect that link, right? Because now we're tracking forward and backwards. Self dot number of items plus equals one, and we're good to go. We've added the front. Okay, so add to front's not too bad, but we can also now add to back. Add to back self and an item. Now again, we need to check, hey, if we're none, right, we, we're we doing the same thing. You know, actually, might as well, oh, we still need to add self.number of items. Um, I guess this happens no matter what, so let's just bump it back one. Right, whether or not we added to the front or not, we're still up one. Let's just add to front, right? We already know how to do that. But we're now the front and the back. Otherwise, we need to add to the back. Well, now tail is going to have a next node. So self.tail now has a next, which is a new node, given the item. And its next is none, right? But its previous is self.tail. Right? So we're going to say, okay, tail's next is a new node. Hey, new node, you have nothing that comes after you. You're the end. And your previous is the tail. Remember, we need to keep those double links pointed both directions. So we add to the back. Great. So those, those are all fine. And then uh, self.number of items plus equals one. Right, we'll add one. Great. So we can add to the back. So we could add to the back before. Right, that worked out before. Not a problem. The new node here. Sure. All good. But now removing from the back. So remove from front, remove from back. Let's do. Let's define remove back. Now to do that, right, if we had our doubly linked list here, we wanted to remove D, right? D is tail here. I can remove now because I can reach, I can repoint tail to this one. I can say tail, now you become my previous. 
before when we had the singly linked lists, I couldn't reference the previous. So if I wanted to remove the back one here, I'd have to go hop, hop, all the way to one before the end to remove the end. And then I could reset tail. That's right, we weren't, we weren't resetting tail. We probably broke this in the singly linked list. If, uh, let's remove front. Let's see, pop. So if it was zero, yep, yeah, we did that. Otherwise, the end. So we also need to check, right? Before we do that. So we can check now, check for new end, new tail. If the current items next is none, right? It's now the tail. Self.tail equals the current item. There we go. Right? Because we'll take our next next. Right? So if we were remo if we were removing the tail, right, that was our next. Next was the tail, right? We found we found the end here. Right? Next next becomes none. Because we're one before where we removed. One before. So now our next is the none, is nothing there. So now we're the new tail. We're gonna do the same thing for remove, right? So this is remove, so this jumps it, same check, same check. Let me just go copy here. This is why this is annoying. Add to index, remove. Okay, if current items, oh, current, sorry, current. So if current's next is none, right, set it to tail. I think that ought to work. Otherwise, we're going to have some trouble adding. Um, we weren't really tracking the tail. Were we using tail anywhere else anyway? I don't know if we were actually even using tail. That's fine. We weren't even letting people like peek at the last thing. Um, that's okay. All right, so anyway, so we're moving from back there then. Okay. We're, we can still check, right? So if self.head is none, maybe the value error or something, I don't know, list is empty. Otherwise, we can go do this thing, then we're good to go. So we're going to take self tail and set it to previous, right? So we need to have the data to remove or something. So data is self.tail dot data. Okay, we got the data. Now we're going to set self tail previous Right? It's previous is going to be the new tail, right? Whatever it used to point to, self dot tail. Uh, we got a note. We got to none out that data too. Self tail dot data is none. Uh, that's the reason we do that. We don't want to keep a reference around that we might be getting rid of. This is just cleaning up for garbage collection, and then we'll make tail be the previous thing, and then self tail tail dot next is now none. Right? Break the link. So if we wanted to remove D, right, we're going to repoint tail, and then we're going to say, oh, by the way, your tail, the next thing you are, is none. Right, that takes D out of the loop. And then we take our number of items down by one. Flip that number of items. Minus one. Okay. So we can remove from the back. We can remove from the front. We can do the same thing. Define remove front. Uh, oh, we do need to check, right, if we're the last thing here. So if self dot... Uh, okay, so this 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 might be a problem here. So our previous, if we were the only item, we might be none. So if self dot tail is not none, do this. If it is none, self dot head is none as well. Right? So when we move back to our previous, if we only had one item... And we go back to nothing. We can't set our next because it's nothing. Uh, dealing with these is obnoxious because we're not circular. But it's okay. We'll find a better way. We have to do it the hard way first before we can find the better way. Okay. So good. Now we're checking. So we check to make sure if we went back to none, then head is also none. All right. To remove for the front, we're going to do the same thing here. 
if we don't have a head, we're, we're no good. Otherwise, the data is the head's data. And then none and out. And then we'll set self.head to heads next. Head.next. Right, jump over it. And then if head is none, if it's not none, heads next. Oh, that's not the right one. So um, take the head data, move it out, move head to the next one. Heads.previous now becomes none. Otherwise, tail is none. We take an item out. So again, this is if we remove the first thing. If we're going to remove the head item here, we need to repoint head here, and then head's previous needs to be none. We need to do a little bit of cleanup. So we have a lot of special handling, right, which is kind of obnoxious for all these things. Because we always have to be looking at, are we messing with the head? Are we messing with the, the tail? Right, these sort of things. They can cause some problems here. So we should say next here. Uh, just be specific here. So next is head when we add the front. Previous is tail when we add the back. Right, we can add to, to whatever item as well, any indexes we want. Now this does make getting an item out easier. Right? To get a given index, then we don't have to stop one before. Right, we can get the same way. Let's do pop. Uh, we'll, we'll copy this one. And they all work similarly, but this one's not so bad. All right. Uh, that, nope, that didn't have in right. Okay. So again, make sure the index is valid. If it is, let's just remove front. Great. Oh, we got to return. That's right. We need to return the data when we're done. Return data. Um, yeah. And remove back. We should return the data. Okay. Good. So if it's the front thing, remove front. If it's the back thing, we can check, right? We can check else if. Well, if the index is equal to self dot number of items minus one return self dot remove back right just just a quick shortcut right that's fine otherwise right start a current now we can range all the way through to index doing the same walking every time oh well, that's a good one gluten that's a good that's a solid dad joke check the balance Okay, so now what we do, when we get to the item that we want, we don't need to use next anymore. We can none it out. This is where it gets messy here. Right, we need to jump it in the list. Okay, so if I want to remove, say, uh, let, let's do a new list here. I've got A and B and C and D. They, they point to each other. Point to each other, point to each other. So if we were to remove C, right, in index 2, let's get to C, and then to get it out of the list, we need to take its previous, set its next to my next. Take my next, set its previous to my previous, to jump it out of the list. Okay, that takes me out. It removes those links. So we set the current items, previous, next, to the current items next. And then take the current items next dot previous to the current items previous. Right? That's is taking itself out of the loop. So going from before it to after it, and going from after it to before it to jump it out of the list. Okay, and then we can return the data. So then what we want to see though, right, is if our next is none, we still we need to become the tail. Remember the tail. A fish with no eyes. Fifth, fifth, fifth. You guys are on a roll with the dad jokes. Alright. So that's the doubly linked list. Again, we could still do all the rest of them. Um, the book has all of these implemented for you. Uh, we just wanted, I wanted to talk through some of the more interesting ones here so we can look at all those edge cases. Uh, when we come to lab on Monday, 
we're going to try and do the positionally doubly linked circular list. Okay, so it sounds like a lot, but we're gonna we're gonna implement it. So the book uses this position wrapper so that you can give someone back a position. It's a way to interact with your linked list. You can store your position. Oh boy. All right, he's gone. Sorry, folks. All right. So the position is a good way to interact with your linked list because once you're at a position, you can add or remove from in front or behind it super fast, constant time. So it's going to give us better performance. So if we look at the performance of these, right, it's still K items here. What is going on? Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be in the science and tech category. All right. You guys all right so far? That's the doubly linked list. We'll pick up, actually, we'll, we'll do some more. So maybe we'll just do, um, maybe we'll modify this. I know, I should go back to basic programming. No one cares about programming. <laughs> um... Oh, it tagged it with in real IRL too, which is weird. I don't know what that's all about. All right. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, we'll work on the lab on Monday, and then we'll pick up a little bit more of this on Tuesday. I'll post the practice um, midterm for you guys as well. So we'll have a little bit more to talk about on Tuesday um, than just midterm review, I guess. We can do a little bit more linked list and, and midterm review. I don't think the midterm review will take the whole time. Because um, I do want to show you the position stuff, and we'll look at the performance there. All right, we're going to try, we'll just add the, the dummy head for our linked list here for lab. And that, that should work out well, because that one's not in the book. Um, I don't think, I'll have to look again. I don't think it's in there. It, it's, it will make all of this code so much easier. Promise. Okay. All right. It's been fun. You guys take care. Um, I'm not going to post a quiz yet, because we haven't finished the chapter yet. A can opener that doesn't work is a can't opener. I like it. That's a, that's a good solid one. Um, and I still need to work on grading your project ones. I'll get those into you probably over the weekend. I'm learning a little behind again, uh, but I'll get those for you shortly. Okay. All right. You guys take care. It's been fun and I'll see you for lab on Monday. If we don't talk sooner. All right. Take care.